Dr. Jürgen Berla, Mrs. Alon, parliamentarians from around the world, members of International Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, and the Israel Allies Foundation. My dear friends, and when I say dear friends, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It is now four years since I had the privilege of joining you at your rally in Jerusalem. The warm welcome you gave me and your energy and commitment started something between us that lasts to this day. Together, we have created an unbreakable bond of friendship. When I told you that your cause is our cause, I meant what I said. I've been true to my word. In speeches around the world, in newspaper columns and in television, interviews, even at the United Nations, I remind you the world of the slaughter and exile of Christians in the Middle East and North Africa. I've also talked about the twin brothers of terror, world silence and indifference. We can never be silent in the face of this crime. This must be stopped. This past June, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Israel's capital, Jerusalem. When Israeli troops went into the old city of Jerusalem, it wasn't just the Temple Mount and Jewish holy sites that they liberated. Those brave young soldiers liberated the holy sites for all religions, Christian holy sites, Jewish holy sites, Muslim holy sites, all sites that had previously been cut off to many, were now opened, respected, and well-maintained. For the past 50 years, we have all been able to pray at sites that are so important to our faith. That was not the case before liberation. But 50 years later, even as we celebrate the reunification of Jerusalem, we face serious challenges, the growing wave of anti-Semitism, that hides itself in anti-Zionism is gaining strength in universities, governments, and now even in some of the mainline Protestant churches. The BDS movement has been very effective. They tell outright lies and they are backed up by journalists and teachers, people who should know better. BDS does not want to help Palestinians. It wants to end the state of Israel. And that would be a disaster not just for the Jews, but for Christians and for the entire world. The bottom line is that the Jewish and Christian communities need each other. We need to fight the lies, to fight the bigotry, to fight the, the great terror of our times. We need to do this together. We share the same Bible. We live by the same values, but not all people believe in these values. And there are people and movements that want to destroy us, simply because we pray to a different God. That is an intolerance that will destroy the world. And God did not put us on the good earth to destroy it. He put us here to work hard, to make a better place, to tell the truth, and to praise his great name. That is why we are here. Every year at this time, we Jews read a very moving chapter in Deuteronomy about the death of Moses when God takes him up to the Mount Nebo and he shows him the entire land, east to west, north to south, and God tells him, this is the land I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. It could not be more clear. And I have said before, you can argue politics in the UN and on television, but who is so vain that will that will argue with God. No one in this room, I'm sure of that. And just to be sure you know, you are standing on solid ground. I quote Psalm 122. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet were standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Psalm 122 doesn't say Beirut or Damascus, or New York. It says Jerusalem. And throughout the Bible, it says it over and over again. Four years ago, I said thank you. Thank you for standing with the Jewish people. Thank you for standing with Israel. Thank you for standing in Jerusalem. And thank you for standing with God. 
Four years later, my gratitude to you has not diminished. Four years later, my thanks to you is profound. Four years later, there is still much work to be done. But, there, but here is the most important part of my message. You are not alone, and we are not alone. We, the Jewish and Christian communities, we do this work together. And together, with God's help, we cannot lose. Never forget this, and never lose your courage, in Paul's second letter to Timothy. And he wrote, I quote, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. May God bless you, and may his blessings continue to shine on you. Thank you.